brick wall busting takes time and patience. And when you're working with probate records, especially for your brick walls, it pays if you know what your research goals might be. So in the previous video that you can find the link to in the description box, I kind of covered some of the basics of probate record research. But today we're going to be talking about using probate rich records to tackle our brick walls. If you are new to the, our video series and you are trying to bust through brick walls, be sure to visit the links in the description of this video and you can pick up your free brick wall busting guide. Not only will you get the guide, you will also get a really cool second thing that I, you have to open your emails to find out about. So go grab it if you haven't. What am I looking for in my brick wall busting series? If you've been joining along, you know I'm looking for the parents of uh, John Townley. I have a clue from John's son's internment record. Uh -huh. not direct, and we're using indirect evidence. Um, so his son's internment record says that uh, the family is likely from Elizabeth, at least at one point in the life. And then John's internment record says that his father's name is Effingham. So we point them in that direction. Descendancy research said that there is a potential for an Effingham who married Rhoda to be a father of John because he has a son named John in an online tree, so we need to start diving in and utilizing these cool school, uh, clues. Excuse me. These are my goals. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for waypoints that establish John and Effingham somehow. They may not clearly say that John is connected to Effingham, but there might be some waypoints that I'm, I'm looking for. Um, I'm also, remember, there was Major and George, in the 1840 census in Cincinnati, Ohio. They were the only other townlies in that area when John was living there at the same time. So do Major and do George show up in the probate records of John? I don't necessarily think they're gonna show up in the probate records of Effingham, but what if they show up there too? And that would be even great. And I'm going to look, I have this hypothesis that this specific Effingham, according to an online tree, is the father of John, or at least he has a son named John, in the probate records, does, it, does he identify John that eventually moves to Cincinnati? So we're gonna start with wills. So I found this will for John Townley online on familysearch.org, and I want you to make sure you really read everything that's here. Now, just because your ancestor doesn't have a will doesn't mean they're gonna have a probate, but if they have a will, it is a fantastic first stop on your journey. One of the things you wanna pay attention to is, look, there is this number right here. Now, that number is applied to almost everything that's associated with this probate file. It could be the probate packet number, it could be the estate number, all of those things. You wanna keep track of that and then use that number to contact a probate court and ask for, can I have the complete file, use the proper terminology, but here's the number, I want everything associated with this number. Um, or when you go into research, that's what you're looking for. Everything associated with this number. So that's a very, very good number to have that you may or may not have seen on the index that I mentioned earlier. We're gonna t extract the information later, the details that we find here, but beginning genealogists, including myself, when I was a baby genealogist, we see that they broke the will ends. So we have the um, eighth item, I'm signing it, and all be all, here's my witnesses, we're done. Well, no, there's actually some really good details that come after this probate. It doesn't happen in all will books, but you wanna go and dive into the rest of the pages and you don't stop looking at all the details until you see the next entry. So let's go see what I extracted from the will. Wills are full of details about relationships. So not only do I have Asa the son, and it says he's mentioning the widow. So we know that Asa died before this will came to be. So if you didn't know when Asa died, well, here's a clue. Some time before the will was signed, then he died and John is leaving 
property and money or stuff to his daughter-in-law in another location. Well, that's great because although I'm not going to go on a tangent and go track that down, in the future, I am going to go investigate what records are in Campbell County, Kentucky for Asa, Catherine, and John because he's passing on land to his son. So surely he bought something over there and there's going to be more information for me to investigate. So put it on the to-do list. But as we go through, we see more evidence of children, their married name, property that they own. And I really like this detail. I'm not sure who knows about this. It's, I'm still working on it. Um, why did he pay them in bonds? They didn't just get cash outright. They got bonds. So what does that tell us about John? What does it tell us about the estate laws? Yeah, see, I told you, you got to go investigate the state laws. And this one was a new one to me. So I've got to go back to the Ohio statutes and investigate about the bonds. And if I don't find it, then I'm going to have to keep digging to try to figure out why would he have done this? So it's still pretty cool. We've got grandchildren and no daughter. She's deceased and um, the children are receiving money because she's deceased or she was written out of the will. So we still need to investigate. We have another daughter. She's getting some property, money and bonds. We have a son. This is my ancestors. And then the wife gets everything all when it's all said and done. She gets all the remainder. <laughs> and then after all of that, I want two grandchildren to inherit. And that's my um, second great grandmother right there. So second, third, and then John is fourth in my uh, line of um, ancestry. And then we can see who the executives was, a son and a son-in-law, so named in the document. And then we have the witnesses. And then this is a really cool feature when I told you to keep going from the will until the will, uh, the next person starts. We see that these two daughters had to testify that this guy signed the will of John because he's now deceased when John dies in 1890. So you can find a lot of great details. And when you find things like that, go see if you can track down John with these two daughters and put that information over on their tree on Family Search because they don't know that this is taking place and this children signed it. Because the record is for John Townley. The, the Rileys aren't gonna be looking for John Townley. So go find that details. It's really great information to find and share with others. I could go on and on and on. I don't want to be the genealogist who'd bore you to death with all of my research. So I'm just going to hit a few more highlights to wrap up this video, show you some clues that I discovered. And if you want to dive deep, deeper into my working research plan, be sure to go to the blog post that accompanies this video. You'll find the link in the description. So in the estate docket for... John Townley, it lists what was happening at the court by date in chronological order. So the things that I'm finding out is when the will was admitted, who the executors are. I pick up an extra person, this Martha Spear, don't know who that is, um, but gotta find out, right? But she and these uh, relatives are putting up money for the, to ensure that this bond gets executed. The will, um, I have the volume number and page number. That's just part of a citation. And then we have the appraisers. Now, I need to throw this in here because sometimes the indexes are not searchable. Sometimes you cannot get to your probate records in the traditional path. So I want you to investigate newspapers specifically for probate information, not just the obituary, for the probate files. You can find so much in newspapers, guardianship notices, orphans court notices. I mean, just all of these things associated with the probate file. So let me show you what I found and why this entry has a new clue and a new mystery. So the will of John Townley, a well-known insurance man, was probated today <clears throat> with 40,000 estate to his widow and children and the names the executors. I gathered this left to the widow and children. We've got these executors, something I already known, but the insurance salesman? I either have been researching the wrong man or the newspaper have mixed him up with somebody else or the newspapers is telling me that John had a career change at some point. Stay tuned for more about that and how it plays out. Now, in the previous video, 
I had talked about or asked the question, what do you call people who research probates? Now, if you watched that previous video and you answered, thanks so much. So here's the answer that I came up with. Air hunters, air searchers, and forensic genealogists. Were you right? Speaking of forensic genealogists, probate research can be really difficult and a lot of it has to be done in person and you might not be able to get there. So if you have any of those situations that you're facing and you're trying to research probate records, then I invite you to check out the link in the description to my friends over at Legacy Tree Genealogists who do this type of research and let them know using that link that Devin Lee sent you. Okay, okay. Who haven't I talked about so far in this really long video? Sorry, I'm really trying to keep it short. We gotta talk about Effingham Townley. Now, over on Ancestry.com, I was able to find part of his probate records. I found a will for Effingham Townley. I'm not gonna go dive in, show you all the aspects. I'm gonna show you the knowledge I gathered just to keep this um, video short and respect your time. So some of the things I found in Effingham's will was he gave up an inheritance to five children, Richard, Abby, John, Jane, Caleb, and his deceased son, William. Now the son John and Richard are to be executors and the year is 1828, and that's important. The R Richard pro uh, proceeds to probate the will, but John isn't included in the record that I see so far. Um, I need to access the probate packet. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to access them due to COVID and other circumstances. So that's on my to-do list, but I can still proceed further with tackling my brick wall. And then when I get the clues, it'll just either add weight to the stuff I've done so far, or it is going to uh, give me another, another clue like that insurance salesman clue that I don't know about. I'll explain more in the city directory videos that's coming up in a future video. We also have the witness, Olivia Halstead. All right, so how is she related? Witnesses tend to be related somehow. She's female, which is really fascinating. How is she involved in this? What I really like about that, that will is it ties back to the clues from online trees. In the online tree, we saw that Effingham had children with William, Richard, John, and Caleb. Not only that, in the um, 1830 census record, we saw a William, a Richard, a John, and a Caleb as well, some other Townley. So things are starting to line up over there in New Jersey that Effingham and his children are, are piecing together. But the question is, have I proven that Effingham over in Elizabeth is my John's father? What do you think? And as I said before, I'm gonna take all of these clues and go put them in my updated research plan. And you'll be able to see that if you go to the blog post from the link in the description. So I hope you're finding this brick wall research alongside with me series valuable. If you need to catch up or you wanna watch the next video when it becomes available, click on this playlist. And then if you're all caught up with those videos, check this video, which was selected just for you.